Today we are addressing the top, very top fear, even bigger than the fear of death, public speaking. That's amazing to me. Okay, so Karen Laus is a communication expert and a confidence cultivator. You just saw her a second ago. She's going to help turn your nightmare into something you could be really good at. But I hear you had to learn this yourself originally a I bit. did. When I was six years old, my dad used to take me to flea markets and he would say, here's a few dollars, go have fun, but never pay full price. And that was the first time I knew that you could actually negotiate. That's fun. <laughs> so I was quite successful at asking throughout my career, but there came a time where I found myself lacking confidence in certain situations, such as with people I was intimidated by, like my boss, for example. And there was a moment I was actually in a boardroom, tongue-tied, could not get the words out, and she had to shut down the meeting. Oh, it was no. so embarrassing. Oh. And she pulled me into her office afterward, and she goes, Karen, you didn't trust your gut. You could have just said, let's table this. I don't remember why we were talking about it in the first place. And that was the moment that I, well, first of all, I was so mortified. I said, I got to stop this. I got to figure out what is the root of my problem. And that's when I realized it was people pleasing. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, anybody else? <laughs> High five. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I said, I've got to fix this. Yeah. And then I left my corporate job a few years later to focus on my mission to eradicate self doubt in 10 million women. That's and amazing. you have made major strides. I mean, you're speaking everywhere with everyone. Hey, you're on TV right now. <laughs> what is, we need to know, what is your number one? tip to overcome public speaking, your fear of public speaking? To say out loud, I'm so excited before I give a talk or before you do a presentation. Now here's the cool thing about our bodies. Physiologically, there is no difference between the nervousness and excitement. Wow. And that's cool. The great thing about it is that you can channel the neural pathways in your brain to fix that <laughs> basically in the moment. So it is the best tip that I could offer in the moment. Now, obviously, over time, you've got to do other things along mm -hmm. with that. But that is the most immediately practical thing that you can do in that moment before you're going to walk on to, let's say, may maybe most of us aren't speaking on a stage, but whether it's in a meeting or with mm -hmm. our colleagues or before a, a difficult conversation even. I love that. Take that nausea and butterflies and think of it as a positive. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, yeah. I like that. Now, you also talk about uh, the power pose. Yes, oh, yeah. Amy Cuddy made this famous, so her TED Talk is great on this. And she talks about a study she did, so I'm gonna demo it, we yeah, can all sure. go. And it's for two minutes, if you stand like this, like Superwoman or Wonder Woman, you know, anyway, making yourself bigger. Okay. Oh. Especially as women, we make ourselves smaller. Yes. Now this is for any gender, but when we stand like this for two minutes, it actually changes our physiology. And when you do that, then you can be ready to go before you walk into a talk. That's cool. Our, our whole production staff is behind camera <laughs> practicing this. That's awesome. I like that. It's amazing. It does That's kind of cool. make you feel empowered. That is so, so cool. Okay, so um, another way that you say um, the, to put into practice how to overcome your fear of public speaking, this one is awkward, but if you can get past it, you say to record yourself and watch it back. Exactly. It is so important to do this because what, what's funny to me is a lot of people will say, well, I don't want to listen to the sound of my voice yeah. or I don't want to see how I come across. And I'm laughing going, everybody else but you is seeing that. Mm. So wouldn't you rather be aware of what you're putting out into the world? Mm. And then you can decide. I can change a few things or you might even celebrate. That's what I find a lot with working with my clients. They go, my gosh, I was better than I thought. Right. But then sometimes we see these blind spots. And for me, yeah. I, I was a hand clasper all the time. Everything was about clasping my hands. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like to the point where it was clenching. And that takes away from our openness and it makes us come across as less of it, less inviting and less approachable. That's funny. When I first started doing news, I did this weird thing with my arm. Like I'd be holding a mic here and I, and I didn't notice until I looked back and saw it. What am I doing? Um, okay. Something else I want to get to is the, how you say it and what you say. There is a difference. Yes. Albert Moravian did a study years ago and he wrote a book called Silent Messages. What he determined is that there are always three components present when we're communicating. There's the visual, so what you see of the person, then there's the vocal, how they sound, and then there's the words themselves. Mm -hmm. And they equal 
So if you were to guess, and I would, I would invite all the listeners or viewers to guess as well, what percentage weight would you give them? So the visual, what you see, the vocal, how you sound, and then the words themselves. I would say words most important, the way you sound and then the way you look. Yeah. Okay, let's do a quick exercise. Okay. Make the peace sign with me okay. and put it above your head, to the side, in front of you, above your head, to the side again, and on your chin. Oh, on your chin. <laughs> so you both, you both yeah. heard me. But it, it was at first. It's Whoa, for most weird. of us. It's kind of like, wait, wait. Why is she saying? She's saying chin, but she's doing I, cheek. You know what? I wasn't looking at you, and that's why. Yeah, I would have done the same thing. That's weird. Wow. It's a mismatch. So, in other words, if I were to come here and say, "I'm so excited to be on TV today," I mean, you'd go, "What? Yeah. I'm saying the right words, but I'm not." sounding excited. So the way that they play out is only 7% of what you say is absorbed when there's something distracting. So if I have a distracting gesture or if I sound monotone or if I'm saying I'm excited but my face is flat, then 55% is visual. So 55 visual, 38% vocal and 7% verbal. So, and where do we spend the most of our time preparing for a message? We spend it on the content. Weird. I've never had a client come to me and say, I think I do this funny thing with my face. Most people come with, here's my deck, here are my slides, can you make sure it flows? I gotta get my point out. And they're very concerned with content, which makes sense. You have to have good content, but if it's not coming through a vessel that's yeah. likable, interesting, and impactful, then it won't be heard. Only seven percent. Oh my too. gosh, I yes, love that. Very good. You tricked all of us over <laughs> yes, here. Exactly. Thank love you Karen. so much. We could talk to you forever. Yeah. Take the next steps to become a better communicator yourself. You can reach out to Karen and book an appointment at KarenLaus.com. And just ahead, she didn't let school.